Hello and good morning. We are excited to uh, present to you Embroidery Club for January 2022. We're going to do a little lesson today on how to applique with your embroidery machine. This is something that a lot of us uh, got our embroidery machines to be able to do, um, be it um, appliqueing letters or appliqueing uh, pictures, quilt parts, or super cute little things like this. Uh, this is going to go on a tote bag. Oh, um, I like to do some of my embroidery on pieces before I go ahead and um, do the uh, the work on the project itself. Sometimes that's nice if we are worried about things. Um, oh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> changing on us. Um, ew, it's not a mistake, obviously. Um, that way uh, we can of course redo it if we need to um, and it's a lot of times it's easier with certain things like certain tote bags uh, to go ahead and embroider on the piece before you cut it out um, anyway i'm going to go over how we prepare for this and then how we do it um, so you will need of course your stabilizer um, for this project i use mostly um, heavyweight tearaway um, and there's really three ways to cut out our applique pieces. The first method is the trim method. Um, well, there's kind of two trim methods. So with your, um, your embroidery designs, as you buy collections, you should get some information. This is from Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design, uh, which is the company we carry. This is the, the scissor tail stitches label, uh, but this is our camera number two. Uh, from this particular collection um, and of course with your color information placement and you know the order we're going to be stitching things out in we have a lot of good information on here we have stitch count and size um, being that this is just a little bit bigger than 4x4 and just under 30,000 stitches I'm going to strongly suggest that you use fusible woven interfacing, which OESD does sell, um, to iron on the back of your material that you're going to be putting the applique on. Um, this really helps with wrinkles. It helps with um, uh, making sure your final product looks as good as possible, uh, because with some of these details, we get kind of heavy with our embroidery, and we really like how that looks, but we don't want our, our fabric to scrunch or anything like that. Um, so anyway. One of the best ways to uh, to do these kinds of projects is to go ahead and have your your pieces pre-cut. Um, if you don't have a cutting machine or we don't want to bother with it for this project, one of the PDFs will be um, this right here, which uh, we can go ahead and cut out our pattern pieces. Um, we do want to print 100% scale, of course. Um, everybody's printer is a little different. Uh, but we do want to make sure it's actual size so these are the right size um, and we want to do an audition uh, so you definitely want to stitch the design at least once ahead of time you don't have to stitch it with your real fabric or real materials but we want to make sure everything is the right size um, this little square for OESD's patterns um, is supposed to be one by one inches so you can just go ahead and measure this after you print it and if that is correct, that will be the right size. You can use a tracing box uh, to trace this on your material and then cut out, or you can uh, cut these pieces out and use them to cut around on your fabric. Of course, I used a sparkle vinyl from OESD. Um, this is really great stuff. It is kind of it has kind of a canvas back. If we have trouble getting it out of the tube, um, we can just go ahead and shrink it. To where it comes out partially and then remove it because um, it is where we can see the colors of course the inside is just white um, it is a nice flexible material for vinyl so pretty um i really love this stuff it's really nice um i have not tried to put it through the washing machine or dryer i would not suggest you put it on anything that needs to do that um spot clean um is probably what you should be thinking. Remember not to sew things that cannot be laundered together. Do not sew them together. That is a rookie mistake. 
I've made it a lot. I continue to make it a lot, uh, but it's not a good idea. Um, so anyway, doo -doo -doo. so I have my, my pieces and then of course, if you have a cut work tool, the Bernina cut work tool, we can go ahead and uh, create a design and cut it out. Um, but first, um, if you don't have one of these or it's just a one-off, we need to get done fast. Um, we're not as concerned with these kinds of things. We can use the original method, which was the trim method. And I'm gonna show you that really quick. Um, right here. This is the trim method. What we do is we go ahead and we stitch that outline. Pretend I am sewing on my fabric, not just a piece of heavyweight stabilizer. <laughs> so um, we just go ahead and we, we do that first placement line, which is just going to be a single line. If your machine happens to not catch it real well, that is fine. It is just for us to place our fabric on top of. So we, we just need a piece of fabric for, for our applique that is larger than our outline. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch step two, which is the tack down. This is gonna be a double outline. One of them is gonna go right along that outside edge. And the next one is gonna go right inside that outside edge. Uh, the tack down should be hidden entirely by the applique stitching. So if this design has satin stitching, like this one does, um, that is gonna be completely covered. If it was had like a blanket stitch, they would be a lot closer together. After I do that, when my machine is finished, I can take my hoop off of the machine. I did not in this case, but I can take my hoop off of my machine. I do not unhoop. I leave my material in the hoop. That is very important. And I go ahead and I start trimming my material. So I trim, I kind of pull along the edge and trim as close as I can. I strongly suggest using double curve scissors for this. These are single curve Kai scissors which I love, but double curve would have been a better idea. And of course, I get it all done and put it back on and I am ready to rock. I am ready to stitch out the rest of that hoop. Um, or excuse me, hoop <laughs> design. Um, however, if I do have a cut work tool and I want to use it, which I do, um, this is the method for creating the design in your software if it did not come with the design pack. So here is Rachel with, with that. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Wrong video, okay. Here is Rachel. Hello, it's Rachel with that and information. I wanna give a quick info of how to make a cutwork file in version nine from a design with applique. So first things first, we want to open up version nine and go to our embroidery canvas and we're going to click on insert embroidery. I'm going to navigate to the embroidery design I want. Although, side note, smile for the camera, which is the collection I'm showing, um, is from OESD and it does come with SVG cut files already made. Um, so this is specifically if you want to use the cut work tool. So I'm going to do Design 7, which is this Polaroid camera. I'm going to open it. I am going to come over to my color. Actually, first things first, hit escape. Then scroll up on my color film. I'm going to select my placement stitches. This actually has two appliques, one at the top and then the body of the camera. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, select one placement line, hold down the Control key while still holding Alt, select the second placement line. Now I want to go to my applique toolbox and find export cutting files or file. I'm going to select it. For objects, I want to export selected objects only. I'm going to leave my layout as digitized. I think that's fine in this case. I'm going to export embroidery shapes because that's, they're, they're stitches, so they're embroidery shapes. I have two options. I have the Bernina EXP or I do have an SVG option. 
So if this design did not come with SVGs, I could make them. I'm going to go with my Bernina EXP. I'm going to export mine to my desktop. I recommend putting uh, your file with your embroidery designs. And I'm going to name this camera app or camera applique, and I'm going to export it. Now, because there are two applique pieces, it does need a little bit of editing on the exported file. So I'm going to go to File, Open Design. On my desktop, I want to find it, but right now it's trying to show me all in one embroidery files. So I'm going to change that. I am going to say I want all embroidery files. And now I can find my camera um, applique. I'm going to open that. It's going to tell me it's not grade A or B art, which is fine. Turn off my hoop. And I have this camera. So these are the two applique pieces. And the reason I want to edit this is because my cutting order. So the cutwork blade has four positions and they're numbered one through four. And so right now it's doing position one, position three, position one, position two, position three. I don't want to go back and forth. So I'm going to select the um, position one that's in third position and say move to start. So click move to start. Then I'm going to select position, or it's in position two, cut three. And I'm going to click move forward one object several times until all of cut three is together. So now it will cut at position one, then cut position two, cut position three, cut position four. Um, if I want a um, tack down or a placement stitch, I can select everything. So control A, go to the edit tool box, outlines and offsets. I want offset outline, eh, eighth of an inch sounds good, so 0.125. I want one of them, I'm going to make it red because I can, and say OK. It has given me more lines than I need, so I'm going to Grab the ones that are inside the cut file and delete those. Not sure what's going on with that. I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to go to reshape and just be like, hey, all those nodes, delete. Delete that too and move that out a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So now I have my placement lines and some help. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to say move to start. Then I am going to copy this. So edit. Copy, edit, paste, change it to a different color. How about green? And I'm going to click and drag it so it's right underneath the red. So it's going to do a placement line and with the showing in the red. And then it'll do a tack down in the green, and then it will cut it out. At this point, I want to save it. Um, so I can do file, save as. <laughs> hey, look, it's the hexagon files from last month, or from Bernina Club. I'm going to go back to my desktop for now and just keep everything together can save it here, and then if I had a USB stick in, I could write it, and I want to send all, um, write it directly to the USB stick in the EXP format. Um, but anyways, it is super easy to make cutwork files. Can't wait to see what y'all do with this. Thank you. Okay, so that's how we create the, uh, the cutwork file, if it didn't come with one. Um, now we're going to go ahead and show you how to do the actual embroidery. So let me get to that real quick. This is going to work, of course, if we are using the pre-cut um, method or the cutwork method. So we're going to stitch those placement outlines. We've got on some our on heavyweight to tear away. Then we're going to place our vinyl on top of that. This is cutting the cut work portion, sorry. Um, I want to have a sandwich, so I do have some um, stabilizer on the top, and I stitch those outlines again. At this point, since I have done my tack downs, my outlines, etc., I'm going to go ahead and put my cut work tool on. I am, of course, using the 44C foot, which is required for doing cut work. It just has a big, nice guard on it to protect your hoop and your machine and your project. Um, the cutwork tool itself is this cute little guy that goes right where our needle goes. Same situation, flat to the back. And it has different cutting positions. As you can see from that little dial on the front, I'm turning it and that changes the position of the blade. So it is cutting out. Once I am done, I hit the checkered flag like I am finished, and then I can remove my pieces. This is really great for cutting up to eight to even more layers of cotton. 
Um, this is vinyl, so I just did uh, my one layer because I only needed one camera. However, um, if this was cotton, I might just stick some extra stabilizer interfacing or scraps in there to give it a better, better feel. So now I have my fabric in the hoop. That was my, um, my denim there. And I'm going to get my design. I want to go ahead and not put my hoop on until my machine asks for it, if I can. Um, that way I don't have to do that whole like Bernina hoop dance where, am I going to put my hoop on? Am I going to put my hoop off? Da 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 da. Um, nice and easy. So I'm going to go ahead and change back to my number 26 foot and my needle because we are going to be embroidering now and we cannot embroider with the cut work tool. It only cuts. So that little pink guy there is my screw key do two. Uh, it works really well on Bermuda machines that use a star screwdriver uh, for the needle clamp screw. Uh, be really careful when you're using that that you don't over tighten because that big nice handle does give us extra torque. Um, that's really great for people like me who have kind of weak hands. Um, I really love it, uh, but again, just make sure you don't over tighten because you can break the screw. Now go ahead and hit that green check mark. Boop. Now I am ready to stitch. So the first step, of course, is my placement outlines for my applique. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down. My machine will show me where I am in the design. Perfect. My next step is going to be to place the vinyl. To place my applique, be it cotton, vinyl, what have you. Another piece of denim. I did put a little bit of 505, which is a temporary adhesive spray made by Odif, on the back. That's going to give us a really nice, um, secure... Um, Well, it's going to hold my <laughs> hold my applique down. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, without gumming up my machine or causing any problems, um, sometimes fusibles can... Um, all that stuff, get it all, all done. Anyway, I'm going to do my tack down stitch, which is what this is right now. It's going to do a double outline. Again, this is going to be covered by the satin stitching around the applique. Once this step is done, I'm going to be ready to place, do the placement line for my second applique, which on this particular camera number two, um, it is going to be the reflector that goes next to the flash. So I picked a gold because I thought that was cute. Um, in some cases, I think the logo of the original maker of the camera went there also. Uh, so you could actually, if you had the software, you could add a word to it. That'd be kind of fun. Put your name, um, put your friend's name. This is going to be a camera bag for, well, a, a tote to carry some camera stuff. So I'm going to do a square bottom, uh, for some friends. But anyway, we're going to place that down again. Just a little bit of 505 spray will do it. Don't just go crazy. Just a smidgen. And I'm going to do that placement line. After I complete my placement lines, my tack downs, got my applique on, all that good stuff, I can continue with my design. So this is a close up to show you a little bit better. Um, that edge is going to just stitch right, right on the inside of that, that fabric to hold it down really well which is why we want a nice precision cut if we're pre-trimming. So if you are doing the trace and cut method with the little, uh, with the PDF pattern, just be careful um, that you are being accurate. And of course, I am now stitching out the rest of the design in the color order that the machine asks for. This is important to not skip around because all of our shading and elements are stacked on top of each other in this design. Remember, this design is a little heavy, which means there's nothing cut out. There's no underlay removed. It's just kind of solid stitching, which gives us that really cool kind of retro patch look. Um, so again, wouldn't it be nice if our machine stitched this fast? <laughs> I'd run out of thread. I wouldn't have, there'd be nothing unembroidered in my life. Uh, black 
elements and then the white are the last steps here. It's just going to go ahead and stitch. Real nice. Ta-da. Like I said, here's those little those little white things, white uh, reflections and the lenses and things that really gives it that I'm a camera look. And of course, there's the flash. So perfect. Once I'm done, I don't want to make a border, so I'm going to hit the checkered flag for finished, and it will go back to step one, but I don't have to do anything. I can just remove my hoop and tear away my stabilizer now. So, um, like I said, the, whoop, where did I put it? This is my completed design, which I will be putting on a, um, a bag. Um, I do like to, when I'm making certain things, uh, go ahead and stitch out my embroidery first and then cut out my project. Um, I do that a lot with quilt blocks as well. Um, so like I said, it's real, real handy. Um, and of course, um, if you would like a copy of this video and some extra instructions, uh, and you would like it for free along with the, uh, club videos from the previous clubs, uh, sewing club and embroidery club, um, go ahead and find us at, uh, Bernina of OKC Friends on Facebook. It's a group uh, for our shop. And of course, um, if you do a show and share, which is our show and tell, so a project you made in the last month or sometimes just something you haven't shared, um, we uh, will get you those designs for free. And if you don't want to, it's just $10. So of course, uh, we are would love to see you in the shop. Um, stop on by and uh, we will see you soon we hope thank you so much and uh, have a have a great tuesday